about the need to do justice here in California because you see, it's only through abolishing the death penalty in states like California Come on. that we will ever be able to avenge our ancestors who were killed for snatching a hog because they were hungry. And abolishing in Mississippi or Louisiana or Texas or Alabama or Arkansas or Florida. Because even the Supreme Court, the United States is guided by the Eighth Amendment, which must be a mistranslation by a barely lit it barely literate colonial, because yeah. you see, the British common law said that they abolished any punishment that was cruel or unusual. That's right. right. But the colonial over here uh -uh. wrote it down as cruel and unusual. Uh -huh. Right. And we've been stuck in a bind ever since. You see, torture in America, if it is popular, if it's practiced by most states, is actually constitutional. Because it doesn't meet the standard of being both cruel and unusual. Right. And so, in order to ban the death penalty, we have to get to a majority of states opposing it. That's the only way we get rid of it in a place like Georgia that will always happen. And right now, we're at about 18 or 19 states. And we can get to one more state and eventually get to the 20 states, states we need, but we have to have California yeah. to get there. I hear, the you. I hear you. I hear you. And so, about three years ago, I came into my office, and you know, it was one of those days that those of us who live in emergency rooms like the NAACP yeah. or the church, yeah. the church, Mother Mary, you know, you, you, you kind of pray every now and then just to have a normal day. Yeah. You know, a day that whatever yeah. you schedule, that's what you do that day. Oh and I walked in convinced that this was that day. I had a lunch scheduled outside the office, not eating a sandwich at my desk. And I was eager to get there. I came in to work after working out. I was just going to pass through the office and head off to lunch. And my secretary handed me a note. And the note said, Governor Bill Richardson of New Mexico called. He wants you to call him back urgently. And I turned right around and walked back to my secretary's desk and I said, Ms. Evans, please remind me how much longer Bill Richardson has to decide whether or not he's going to sign the bill abolishing the death penalty in New Mexico. And she said, well, I could be off because it's like mountain time or something, but I think he has about six more hours. And I said, well, why don't you get him on the phone right now? Right. <laughs> push off my lunch because I don't know how long this will take. And so she calls, and uncharacteristically for a governor, he gets right on the phone. And he says, Mr. Jealous, I have quite a task in front of me today. I said, this I know, Governor, how can I help you? He said, well, let me confess something. You know, I've supported the death penalty my entire life. I've run for office and made it clear I support the death penalty my entire career as a politician. I've supported the death penalty, but you know, as governor, I've had to look at it more precisely. You know, I'm endowed with that right that it comes down to us from kings, where I can say death or life. And I've looked at it more precisely, and the more I look at it, the more precisely I look at it, the more troubled I am. Thank you, God. And I don't know what I'm going to do today, because I've told everybody this is what I believe in, but the more I look at it, the less I believe in it. Yeah. So he said, Mr. Jealous, please just succinctly give me your best argument. And I said to Governor Richardson, I said, I want you in your mind's eye to imagine that person whom you think you would have a hard time explaining abolishing the death penalty to. I want you to imagine that conservative sheriff breaks rank with his party to support you. I want you to think about that so-called victim's rights advocate. Say so-called, because when you read the words of these families, his loved ones lynched, you realize that not every murder victim's family is focused on vengeance. Right. right. You're right, brother. Right. I want you to think of that person. Say, okay, I have that person in mind. I say, okay, well, imagine you telling this person what I'm about to say to you. And by the way, this was taught to me by Kamala Harris. True. All right, sir. All right. She's a bad sister. She's bad. Yes, you're right. Said. Imagine you telling that person that you're afraid to explain yourself to. I thought about it. I prayed on it. I looked at the issue. And I came to understand this. Every time that a prosecutor, and it's not all prosecutors, you know, in most counties it's usually about 60 A's in the whole state. That, every time that prosecutor chooses to seek 
the death penalty for whatever reason, the truly troubled or the politically ambitious, whatever the reason is. Every time they seek the death penalty, they pull 500,000 to sometimes more than one million dollars out of the local criminal justice budget to cover the trial. Right. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. That otherwise could have been spent, would have been spent on some other justice issue. Come on. Yeah. And in this state, like in every state, there are counties, there are cities, there are neighborhoods where every year, sometimes 30% of the homicides, 40%, 50%, 60%, in some places even 70% of the homicides go unsolved. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And every time that they pull out that 500000 or a million dollars to kill somebody, you can't go to the homicide unit. Right. They can't put beat cops on the street. Right, right. right. Yeah. And so you prayed on it real hard and you decided to yourself that we would be better off, our children would be safer if we abolished the death penalty and sent the money over to the homicide unit. I hear you. Because we would all be safer if we caught the killers who are still on the streets right. rather than kill the ones we have in cages. And I said, Governor, if it's, if it's any consolation to you, that argument has been focused group with people like myself who are murder victim family members. And to a one in every focus group, northeast, southwest, the majority of murder victim family members, no, no, no matter how much they theoretically liked the death penalty, decided they, they would rather spend the money on making sure fewer families had to go through what they went through. Yes, right. Amen. That's right. good then. Then killing some. You see, when you go out there as a spiritual warrior, you have to be able to bring the scriptural argument. Uh -huh, yes. But you also have to assure people who have gone through pain in their lives that you've actually thought about their predicament. Yes, sir. are prepared here on earth as we're seeking the city of God in heaven to actually do something to build the city of God right here on earth. Right. And in this proposition, which is really Kamala Harris's formula, if we're honest, there is the opportunity to do both. To do that which is morally right, right, sir, and that which practically will make us safe. Yes. 